worked on getting the house, the outdoor part, looking really pretty. This is one of the floral baskets that we put together to get started. And what I did was I bought a bunch of flowers that I could make everything kind of look the same almost. And that pot there is something that David put together. He had picked that pot out a little while ago. And um, so it just kind of gives us a little bit of a border up there. We, that blue thing is a temporary garage for us right now because we're still doing some clean out from the estate and it just gives us a place to kind of go through and clean up. One of the things that I invested in this year were some green stocks. And this one here looks empty, but it's not. Some of the seeds are starting to come along, which I'm really excited about. And those will be things, that, there are different lettuces in there. So that will be the food that we'll be eating after the other green stock lettuces. And I'm coming out every day able to eat. So this is a view from our deck. And as you can see, it's busy, but it's going to be wonderful. But it's been a lot of backbreaking work. And I have to say, every night that I've been out here, I have been in the tub soaking because it's been very painful. And fortunately, David was able to take a few extra days the last two weekends and we got a lot of the heavy stuff done. Over here, we have a little garden that I had shown on pictures that has, um, there's some peas that are growing, there's some, um, there's a variety of things that are in here. The comfrey in the front, I'm going to replant into a deeper pot um, to give it better spacing. And, but there's thyme, there's basil, lettuce, Brussels sprouts, so, and I put it here because it's a cool area. I usually have a cushion on this bench. I think David plans on replacing it, but I usually have a cushion on it. But it's starting to rain, so that's not going to be on here. This here is a baker's rack I picked up in a free cycle group. And what I liked about it, I said, okay, it's metal. It, I didn't paint it. I thought about painting it the blue like I've done the... Um, milk cans and we did that this year because I wanted a pop of color just to kind of give it a pop of color. So the tabletop that was on here was particle board and so since I wanted it down here I needed um, pressure treated or some sort of wood that would be a solid table and when we're out here and we have a small little cookout or whatever it's a tabletop we can use and in the meantime we have some herbs that kind of make it look kind of pretty and yes I can cook water out here and stuff this is my favorite get some mulan that I put in here I think I'm gonna have to transplant it I have found another mulan somewhere too because it must have seeded and this is what the gardens are looking like this is our rose garden this comes back every year I have some comfrey no excuse me I have some Oh, some other herbs in here that I can't think of right now because we're tired. This is a little waterfall. And we like having little water things throughout the yard. We had to repaint our little reader guy. We really like him as part of our garden. And the duck over here is not working right now. Dave's going to try to fix it. It's something that we got from Dave's dad. And as we walk through, these little flower things, these spinner things... We have them because our grandkids love them. So that's why we have them. And then as we go through, I decided to put these little planters here with a bunch of herbs. And I can come out here or wherever and grab what I need. Again, there's another milk container that looks lovely with its new color. We think so. And um, David also painted the thermometer and clock up there, but we have to paint the black on it. So this little lilac here, this drum, that black piece, is actually a dryer drum that we made into a little garden for our youngest daughter because she really wasn't into gardening, but she wanted something. So we used to put um, marigolds in there. But what we have here is all around it are the marigolds. The lilac is something that I took from the melon lilac tree to fill in here because it was kind of growing out of place. So I took it and I replanted it and got that going. And David worked in this area, made, making a little kind of um, rock garden. And then I had already planted those 
daisy type flower so that's gonna stay in here is part of our lilacs we lost a good chunk of it this year and I've replanted some of it I couldn't get it all but we still seem to have a lot of lilacs and we need to trim it down so because I'm gonna slowly bring this around as we look back at the house in front of the chicken coop we have these are all lilacs too so it's actually quite pretty and it smells amazing when they're all in blossom sorry if I go too fast this is a perennial garden and we see some raspberries coming up through it we always see raspberries coming through here we have to fight the birds we do have a few um, strawberries left in here but a lot of them got ruined and I'm redoing something different with that but this is where we have raspberries and blackberries and over here we have some grapes that are coming up this came from my father-in-law's house um, maybe 10 years ago and so the grapes are flowering we'll see what happens over here this is one of the um, skid type gardens we've made we just moved it back here because this will be my tote garden <laughs> and this is it's just easier it's kind of like raised beds until we can actually make the raised beds and these two crates here I'll have peppers I have some um, brassicas over here going and and the hugelman things we're still building up over there but at least we got life going and I brought this table back out here so that I had a place to harvest and pick things up and put them down there These little planters, I plan on putting some peas in and letting them grow, and maybe even some sweet pea flowers. We get a lot of maple tree babies that we have to pull out. I tried pulling them out, but they're too deep, so I, we need to either get pliers or have my husband pull them out. We've been getting a lot of birds. We've had all sorts of them, 8, 10, 12 different types of birds. This morning I came out, and it was... Um, the cardinals were out, and of course robins and everything else. Those who do not see my pictures, these, this is the H garden. We call it H garden because my daughter Holly started it a long time ago when she was younger. And so we just keep it going. My husband added the waterworks, which we like. And we like it because we get a lot of bird activity in here. Sometimes at night we get raccoons who have found something in the compost and bring it over and wash it. And then we get stuck and we clean it up. It happens. And then in here, I keep forgetting about this. This is a tulip. For those that don't know. And that thing in the pot is like a water plant. So we're trying to figure out what to do with that. And I'm hoping to get something with a little bit more pop of color in this bird cage. And somebody was getting rid of it, a friend of mine. And I said, oh, I'll take it. She didn't know what I was going to do with it. They had it for like a wedding decoration. And I used it for flowers out in the garden. And we have a bunch of other perennials that are coming up through here. We're cleaning up this area. And we're going through some items over and through here. We put this dog fence in that we got so that it could keep the wildlife out. And we have a rose coming up and I've, we worked in this garden. Um, Lots of prickers on a lot of these perennials. And then over in here, looks like my tulips over there are starting, or daffodils are starting to go by. And it's a little crowded in here, so I'm going to have to possibly thin it out at some point. I did not have time this week because we were just, we've just been busy. I'll get that filled up for them, for the birds. And... And as we come along this way, we come to the gazebo. And again, we have another lilac branching out over in another place where the birds can hide. And um, this is a little table set that I love. I picked it up in an antique store maybe about 8 or 10 years ago, and I love it. And what I like about in here, from outside, it's hard to see that somebody might be in there, but 
We like how this is turning out. We've got a few raised beds. And there's a reason that I put pots inside. It's easier if we want to move in and change things around. This little shelf unit was white and I found it. I got it at another free cycle. Somebody was giving it away. It was white and I didn't like the white. It was too stark. So I painted it this fun blue color, but you can see that throughout. And over here we have the purple flowers. I forgot what they're called. And then over here we'll have some Black Eyed Susans coming up. The rose that I planted last year is doing it. This is a different type of rose. And then um, some hangers that we made. We did not buy any hangers this year, which I'm happy about. So in here, the blue barrel, which we had painted brown before, it kept scraping off. So we've scraped it down and we're going to be repainting it. Maybe that pretty blue color we have. So this is kind of like a little private gazebo effect here. And we can come in. It's dry from the rain. It's a rose David gave me. And some of these things got potted late, so they were a little tired looking. I got some kale growing inside as well. A big pot of herbs that I have to keep cutting back. And I've put in some of my favorite wind chimes. I'm a wind chime person. I, yes, I just love wind chimes. It drives my kids and my husband nuts, but you know what? This is my garden. Anyways, we got more lettuce, um, sage, and a few other things. The reason there's a lot of herbs, we, I find that, or I understand, that some herbs prevent some of the bugs and stuff like that hurting some of our plants. So I decided to do that instead of pest control. And then, but I also use like thyme. I use that a lot in tea. The oregano I use, I put both of them together and they're great for like when I have Lyme disease. I drink tea like that all the time. We've got basil and tonight, both Dave and I had a salad made from a few ingredients that are in here. And there is a plant in there. It's a mosquito plant right in that big bucket there, surrounded by some marigolds. So we'll see how that does. And I really liked those pink daisies. They're pretty. And so here we have, we got some more cleaning up to do, but we'll get there. Here I decided this is where the other dog fence is. And I decided we're going to have two more tomato plants there when we're able to bring them out. Got these daisies and that comfrey over there will be moved out. We'll be cleaning this area up a little bit that's over here. But what I did was, because we have two barrels here, two water barrels, I made a little path in here. So I have a fig tree. And let's see, can I get a picture of where that fig is? They overwintered it, and so when I got it, there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, little baby fig. I don't know how it'll do, but we're trying to take care of it so that it comes along. And we have another one here that ha is mostly some herbs, but it's mostly a flower, a green stalk. And I'm really happy that we got these. It was I was talking to my husband about it, and I had saved money for this year's garden. And this is something that's portable. I can move it. And the other day, on our way home from an appointment, my husband stopped and we got this gorgeous, gorgeous rose bush. And so I just repotted it into a different pot. And for those of you who have not been, who have not seen, I'm going to back up first. This is our greenhouse that my husband had built me a couple years ago. And it was a gazebo that got hit by a tree. So we took it, and as the rain comes down, it goes down into the gutter and into our water barrels. And this is how I water my plants. And we got one on both sides, and we got some on the other side of the shed, too. But let me see. Oh, I can do it. Sometimes it's tough to open the door. So I did tidy things up today. But we still have a few more things that I'd like to get out. And I have some other plants that are going to be 
coming in some chicory, some hyssop. The thistle doesn't seem like it wants to come along, but there's some flowers and some other items here, as you can see. And but I have some pots of some herbs sitting there, and those shelves up there, those came from my father-in-law's estate, and I attached them to that top shelf. My husband thought it was crazy. But the nice thing is, is I look back and it's like, okay, I got all my extra stuff that I need. So it works for me. And it's still early spring, so our thermometer doesn't go up too much. So we're keeping the plastic up on the very back until the temperature is. I think in another couple of weeks, we're going to take that off in the back. And we got some lettuce growing over there as well. Tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and all those are not going out yet. And over here... No, that's not what that is. I know that's not what it is. This is some peppers that I'm started from seed. We'll see what happens there. And this cabinet here, this is something I believe we got from the estate as well. And all I did was it was white. So I painted it this turquoise blue type thing. And I love it. So it organizes everything I need. Just the miscellaneous things that kind of... You know you kind of need with caring for your plants and so this is my greenhouse and i've got things that i can get hangers on the top so i can hang things although i haven't been doing a lot of that so that's the greenhouse let's go back out and as we go back to the house we have um, some different things going on here. That's stevia in those four pots. I had a hard time finding that. I have a hard time growing it from seed. And then this garden over here is full of perennials. And there's a, that, um, I eh, can't think of it. Well, the tall plant will get, the lily, will get very, very tall. I don't know why that one does, but it gets very, very tall. We have some bee balm. We have, there's just a variety of things in here, which is kind of cool. And I'm drawing a blank on things because, honestly, I am exhausted. But another thing that I like to do is to put, like, little colored pebbles into the water baths or the bird baths so that the bees can land on them and get their own water. And um, so pretty soon you're going to see a lot of these things just start to really pop. Um, these red things, these are for when it's time to put the tomatoes out. They will come in here and these are designed for the water to go around the side and still be able to water the plant without them drowning. And I'm going to try to figure something out so if I know there's a cold spell coming in, we can take care of it. So those are all in. I did those a few weeks ago. And the amount of growth in this garden is huge. We've still got some grass in there. we got some viney type things. But there's going to be a lot of different um, tall daisies and other kind of stuff. We have to work. We have to do a paint job here. But you can't do it all in one weekend or in one month. And look at that. We've got another maple tree growing in the back. We need to cut that baby up. Those are some daylilies. I actually took some of those and put some out front in the entrance area. And I put some out back against the fence. And I added a few other flowers just to give it a pop of color. And so, coming back around, this is where our pagoda is. And this is where we end. But um, it's been a long, long couple weeks, month, and um, I like coming back here, I like seeing the flowers, and um, it's just, it's been a lot of work, and the one thing I haven't done, this is a little corner garden, I just have mint in here, because it's hard to grow anything in here, um, because of the rocks it's hard to put a pot in there as well, and the last thing that we have going on, we have a temporary garage here because we're still trying to clean up from the estate. So it's just easier sometimes to put my car in there. And 
this is what my garlic is doing. And I'm really, really excited about this. And that noise you hear is my husband breaking down some cardboard because recycling day is around the corner. The plastic will come down because we have white stone in there and when we put this up, um, it was coming into fall. And what I did with that soil is I made the raised bed, I put cardboard down, and then I put leaves, compost, and I put a few other things in there, and then I topped it with leaves after I planted the garlic bulbs. And I don't remember how many, maybe 30 or more are in here. I'm really excited. I'm actually surprised with this temporary um, garage that we're getting enough sun, but when I come out here, there is plenty of sun. The little tree at the end is a blueberry bush, and sometimes we have tons of blueberries, and then other times not so much. But I'm really excited about this because I have grown garlic before, but not with this kind of success. So that is about the end of the tour. So, honey, are you what? tired? I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> we have worked so hard every single night we go to bed. Well, before we go to bed, we actually pour a hot tub with Epsom salt because our bodies are aching. And I have to say, this is the end of a month of me working and you doing two mm -hmm. long weekends. And um, it's just been a lot of work. But I know that a lot of people would not do this, would not want to. And it's there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we just want the perennials. Well, I have plenty of perennials, but I like the work. I like, I can go out today and I was able to make a salad the last few days. And I don't have to go good. to the grocery. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and he's not a salad person. But so it's actually kind of nice. So now that we got most of it done, in a couple of weeks, once the, we once the weather allows us to, we will be um, planting the other plants and seeing what God blesses us with. So thank you for watching. And I'm going to share a little bit of the bird activity that's out there in a little bit. I don't know if you can see, but there are some cardinals in the yard over there. I think I have this. There's, there's a female that's flying away. And the cardinal must have flown away because I, I looked away and it's gone now. But we get a lot of activity. I don't generally like the bird feeders filled because we get squirrels everywhere. But from my father-in-law's house, he had tons and tons of sunflowers. So I'm going to ferment those for our chickens. Although, oh, I just love watching these days. Looks like up in that branch. I really do wish, if I get closer walking, they will fly away. But what I like about here is that if you just sit and listen, it's magical. It's bird magic. <laughs> And they're very active. At 4.30 in the morning, they start yapping away. Okay, they're not yapping, they're singing. So, as you can see, this is my little oasis away from reality. But, this is my reality. And with the herbs, I can do some medicinal stuff. Some of the flowers that I grow are for medicinal purposes as well. And the therapy I get by being able to come out, work in the garden, sit in the gazebo or sitting over here underneath the pagoda, it's just a relaxing thing that I enjoy doing. Well, here we have our chickens. I had put that tire in yesterday, filled it with sand and some diatomaceous earth, and they just didn't touch it. And then said something to David, and I said, I don't know why, because they go over and they dig everywhere else. But he told me a few minutes ago, they're digging in there and getting everything. So they seem to really enjoy having the tire. And we might, if we come across another one, we might put it in there. And we got some kale over here. This kale here is, yes, I will eat it, but it's really grown for their purpose. They love kale, and so that's what these are for. I have another bucket I found that I can grow in as well. And, oh, you locked it up, David. Okay. You, want me you can. So today I went in here and I cleaned it all up because the um, 
they just make a mess. And what we did was we took down one of the roosting bars because they just seem to like that one because it's in front of the window. You gotta go in, you can't come out. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on. No. I'll pick you up. Okay. Now, one of the problems when they don't, if they're always dropping their things. Okay, you can't see in there very well. But anyways, we had the roosting bar right behind the window, and they loved it because they got to see out. But I moved it, or had David take it out. And so I've got some eggs in here that hopefully, these are wood eggs. I put little smiles on so that we wouldn't confuse <laughs> what's a real egg or not. And we are kind of hoping that they start using these four nesting boxes because they have a tendency to get in on top of each other. This little coop was meant for the babies when we got them last year. And yet, they all go in there to nest. You know, and I'm just like, why are you doing that? And they nest in one side only. And I did put some porcelain eggs in here. And I, I wash these up and put tomorrow, all three of them will be on the other side. There's a fourth one, but I have no idea where they hid it. They hid it in the winter. So, hi girls. Who's nagging? Oh, you have an attitude. So they're still working away and they will be going to bed soon. Oh my gosh, David, did you see how much they dug in? Yeah. Crazy, crazy girls. That was actually mounted up before. Yeah. Can you open the door over there? I'm gonna... This one? Yeah. Sure. So I'm gonna show you. Because today, I, every weekend, I come in here and I do a deep clean. And so normally they can roost right here. Oops. There's the door. Normally they can roost right here, but we took, David took the bar down because they were pooping right into the nesting boxes. So I know they've been in there. Every time I clean, they like to check in on me, find out what I did, and then they go in there and scratch around. So, hi. So we'll see what happens, see if they can tolerate roosting on the two bars. There's plenty of room for them. They shouldn't have a problem. And you wanna say hello? Say hello. So it got all cleaned up today, ACV in their water, diatomaceous earth in their poop, and <laughs> we have attitudes. So say goodnight. No, thank you. Okay. So that is that. Girls, you want to say goodnight? You never do. No, we all have attitudes. So friends, I hope that you are having a great day and I hope that whatever passion you have in life, whether it's gardening or not, I hope that you do it with the grace that God has given you and that you do it with joy. Have a great evening, have a wonderful week, and may God bless you.